On today's show, we'll preview the first Saturday night game for the Maple Leafs as they host the Minnesota Wild. And we're officially 72 hours into the new NHL season. What way too early overreactions are we seeing league-wide? All that more coming up on the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. What's going on, Dave? TGIF. Yep. It's. Uh... Getting ourselves closer to open night's great. The first Saturday night game always feels like it has a different aura to it. So I'm definitely excited for this one. Yeah, it it always does just for whatever reason. And they've got the Minnesota wild in town. So already facing off against a Western conference foe. And then, uh, well, they're going to hit the road and play a couple of Western conference teams uh, in the next week or so. But uh, yeah, Minnesota coming to town. Uh, there's been a lot of like hilarious takes that have been tossed out in the hockey universe over the last 72 hours. A lot of teams, you know, getting their first games underway now officially. I think the last bunch of uh, teams played their first games last night, and uh, there were some takes, some some interesting takes after 72 hours of the season. So we're gonna get into some of them uh, a little bit later. But let's break down. Uh, let's break down this game. You know, between the Leafs and the Wild tomorrow night, uh, Leafs come in favored on the money line. They're the favorites to win at home, uh, minus 176 over on FanDuel. If you want to place a wager there at the under set at six and a half. Uh, what are you expecting out of this matchup? Well, if I know the Minnesota Wild as much as I do, which I wouldn't call myself an expert on them, but from what I recall, a very low scoring type of game is what we should be expecting here. I remember the game between Minnesota and Toronto last year in Minnesota was a wild one. It was pun intended, Um, but it was, it was an entertaining game. I don't remember that much about the one that they played in Toronto last year. Like, so the one, the one in Toronto, so the last game that they played in Toronto, Toronto won it in overtime two to one. Uh, was the score there, but you're talking about the one back in November. Yeah, they won four three. And two things I remember from that game one, that was the Boreas Salming game, I believe he had just passed away. And uh, so William Nylander was playing inspired that night, and he had himself a terrific game and, and scored a goal uh, in that game. And I believe it was an afternoon game as well. And that was kind of the first time that. Matt Murray was getting called out for pushing the goalposts. Remember last year, that was kind of a storyline where he was kicking off the goalposts um, when the puck was in their end. So those are the two things that I remember from that game. Yeah. And I remember Matt Murray also making like a dime of a save. Cause like the least blue in the line, dying seconds in the dying seconds. I think like the least blue line was also a little banged up. Like Lilligren and Sandine were out there in the last minute of the game. I think. And he made this like 10 bell say with like, yeah, nine seconds left to keep it as a four, three, uh, four, three win. So it, these games, like the wild have become a more entertaining team than in the past. I'll give them that. But I think they still kind of lack a little bit when it comes to that offensive depth. Like you look past Kaprizov, you look past like Matt Boldy, Zuccarello, ain't a whole lot there personally. And like that's always been the challenge for Minnesota. But what they do compensate for very well is they have a good goaltender in Philip Gustafson. We could take the Ottawa Senators for that one. And their blue line key, like they you have a hard time getting anything really usually on the, against that blue line. Like they're very stingy. 
Uh, yeah, yes, they have one of the better blue lines in the National Hockey League. They've always seemed to be able to to churn out solid blue liners. Um, I just pulled out the box score from that game that we were talking about in Minnesota last uh, November. Which Leafs defenseman do you think led the team in ice time in that game? I'm going to go with Justin Hall. Justin Hall led the team with 23 minutes and 46 seconds of ice time that day. 22 minutes of even strength time as well. Time on ice. That's that's wild. But yeah, that was when both Brody and um, and Riley were both out and Hall and Geo ended up becoming the de facto top pair. Not the case in this game. We got a fully healthy blue line for the Maple Leafs. You got Brody and Riley in there. Jake McCabe and, uh, you know, John Klingberg. I'm hoping for – that's a guy who I am excited. I guess you could call it a revenge match. I mean, Klingberg was a, a member of the Minnesota Wild last year, got traded there at the deadline, played, a, you know, for them in the first round of the playoffs. So, you know, you could consider it a revenge match maybe. But he's somebody who – we didn't talk about a whole lot actually in yesterday's show when we were breaking down the game against the Canadians. Uh, but I thought that he was actually real solid uh, in that one. And I know that Sheldon Keefe said that uh, he was impressed by the way that uh, that um, I was going to say Lilligren, no, the other Swede, Klingberg, played in that game. So I'm hoping for a solid uh, follow up game from him tonight or tomorrow, rather. That's something that I'll be keeping an eye on. Is is how does John Klingberg look in his follow up performance after a solid debut? Yeah, and watching him. I noticed, like, I know people, What uh, my expectation was, especially on the power play, was to see him shoot the puck more, but he was more of a distributor, and I'm like, well, I mean, that's kind of what Morgan Riley was supposed to be, and that's why they changed things out a little bit, but no, I thought he handled himself quite nicely um, in this game. Like, I know people are going to say he was on the ice for the two-on-one goal, but, you know, he did a, as well of a job thinking that, you know, I'll take the pass, let the other guy coming in try to take the the guy coming in on the back door. Unfortunately, it was John Tavares <laughs> wasn't able to get uh, get up to speed there to get. Uh, I was- mean that, that play that play. You're you're more so looking at Jake McCabe and saying bad pinch, right? Well, left his true. man, yeah. Left his man on an island on two on one. That's not uh, Klingberg's forte. <laughs> no, <laughs> really I, I'm not. a little surprised that Jake McCabe was the one that was pinching on that as well. Uh, he's got a little Justin Hall in him in that regard, though. He's, he did that I a little like bit. Justin Hall liked to spend all of his time below the goal line. Let's not <laughs> but yeah, I thought, but I thought, you know, like Klingberg, I, like, yeah, the two assists, the, the assists on the Gregor goal, like the dish to Nylander for the one timer, like that's yeah. what they brought in John Klingberg for. That's yep. he, if he, if they are able to maximize. That style of play from John Klingberg, it's going to be a good year for him because he'll put up points, even a, you know, even strengthen on the power play. We always know that the big issue is can you keep the puck out of his net when he's in yeah. his own? Yeah. So that that'll be something to keep an eye on tonight. Obviously, uh, was also taking a look since Sheldon Keith took over as head coach, at least four zero and one against the Minnesota Wild. But the Wild are coming off a pretty strong victory uh, against the Florida Panthers where they shut out Florida and Philip Gustafson made 41 saves in, in this one for the shutout. Um, so <laughs> Minnesota, they're a good team, but that's a good goal. They're going to have to make sure that they get some traffic in front of the net because I think you're going to – like there was a couple in that Montreal game that certainly you look back and think that probably shouldn't have went in. I, there was a couple of goals from Matthews and that read that first goal from Noah Gregor probably shouldn't have been goals, but uh, you know, they were give, gifted with poor play from Jake Allen, not going to be the case against Philip Gustafson. So uh, I, that's why I think that Ilya Samsonov, uh, if we're talking about other things that we're keeping an eye on tonight uh, or tomorrow, Ilya Samsonov has to have a bounce back performance. So that imagine Philip Gustafson is going to, you know, stand on his head in the wild crease. Sammy's got to have a response to that on the other side of the ice. And interesting of note here, the Leafs did not even play against Philip Gustafson last year. So this is the first time they're going to be 
uh, first time in a Leafs uniform, uh, in a Wild uniform, they're going to play against. I'm pretty sure they went up against him when he was in Ottawa at least once or twice. So, like, you're right. Like, he is probably like the one goalie that when I was doing all my fantasy drafts, he was like near the top of the list because everybody tends to go for certain goalies early. And I waited and I tried to wait as long as possible. And I, as soon as I saw his name, bring him up. Cause like he's going to, not only does he get wins, but he also fills out all those other categories. He's a big body. Like Ottawa didn't want to lose Philip Gustafson, but they felt like they needed to get more experience when they went for the Cam Talbot trade. Now, I mean, I mean, that was just flat out was a terrible, yeah, terrible that's, evaluation. That's a territory on classic, right? Like it's that, that's that was. That was Gabby Marino for uh, for Dalton Varsha right there. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and, like, the funny thing is, is one of the issues the Senators had last year, goaltending, because Cam Talbot got hurt, wasn't very good. I think they would have preferred to have Philip Gustafson. You know what this trade, what that trade turned out to be? And we're going way off topic here, so we'll, we'll wrap it up with this comment. That is the goaltender equivalent of the Philip Forsberg for Marty Erat trade. Like, yeah, from the moment that Phil Forsberg ended up in Nashville, he was scoring goals and he was a stud. And from the moment Marty Erat landed in Washington, he was terrible, old. And uh, that was an L right from day one. You, you look at what happened last year with Cam Talbot and, and, and how Gustafson went on to have a Vesna worthy season. Uh, an L from day one for uh, for Ottawa there. But yeah, Toronto. And it, it, you brought up equivalent trades, and this is going to hurt for Leafs fans. Maybe a little bit of that Andrew Raycroft for Tuka Rask sort of well, deal. Well, the reason why I won't say that is because they were both prospects, right? Right. Like they were both prospects. Whereas the the Erat and Forsberg, you're trading a veteran for a, a young, unproven prospect. And that's kind of what happened with Gustafson and uh and uh talbot right old for for a young guy but okay. yes uh, in terms of awful trades that turned out to be complete l's absolutely thank you for bringing that back up uh there's, there's really no need no need to bring up that trade dave what are you gonna tell me next phil kessel was worth the two first round picks wow no. No, we're, maybe when it's time to go to break. I think it's time to go to break. <laughs> All right, stay quick break. When we come back, we'll go. Uh, we'll go through the three keys to win tonight for the Toronto Maple Leafs, or tomorrow. I keep saying tonight for tomorrow uh, when they take on the Minnesota Wilds. Uh, but before we get into all that, Dave, have a word from today's show sponsor, our good pals over at Jay's Case. Yep, everyone should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace Case. The Jace Case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so that you're not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure that you have the medication on hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. So make sure you go and get $20 off these life-saving antibiotics with, from Jay's Case by using code LOCKEDON at checkout on jaysmedical.com. That is J-A-S-E medical.com. Welcome back into the Locked On At Least podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with my co-host Dave Morissuti. If it's your first time and you're just finding us, uh, we are a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast. You can find our uh, shows wherever you do subscribe to your pods. Also, we can be found up on YouTube via video format. Uh, if you could subscribe there, that'd be greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed the video, leave us a like as well. And comment down below, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow night between the Minnesota Wild and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Let's get to our three keys to victory for said Maple Leafs tomorrow. Dave, what's the first key? The first key is watch the self-inflicted mistakes. Limit the self-inflicted mistakes. That yeah. I expect this Minnesota Wild team to be a more physical team, you know, hard forecheck sort of team. So they're going to have to really watch that and, with that comes the prone to make those mistakes. So 
yeah, so that's going to be a big one. That was a big issue against Montreal. Yeah, uh, the exact same key, right? Limit the turnovers. Uh, Eleven giveaways in that game against Montreal, and it came back to bite them uh, on a you know a couple of couple of times uh, where it ended up in the back of their net moments after a, a giveaway. So. You know, you don't want to be doing that to the uh, to to the Minnesota Wild because, you know, you give up two, three goals to this team. It's it's tough to score two, three on them. So um, certainly got to limit the turnovers. And that's going to be probably the, the most important key, I would say. Another one that I have is uh, got to win these, you know, just get off to a good start. <laughs> like I, I let's not let the start be a storyline again this year so many times has this been a problem for the maple Leafs? where early in the year we keep saying their starts have been terrible their starts are bad and it takes them a little bit to wake up saw it happen in night one right against the montreal canadians pretty bad in the first period and then they storm back in the second period and that was a little even i guess in the third um but Let's get off to a good start, right? Start on time, score an early one, and continue to build off of that. I think that is something that's going to be key for this squad tomorrow night against the Wild. Yeah, and like another key for me here is you look at the young guys on this team. I I know that I gave a little bit of grief that they're like, you know, the Kaprizov, like there's not much else out there, but they do have some decent young players. You know, Matt Boldy is on the to mind. Brock Faber. Scored his first goal, scored. NHL goal tonight. I totally yeah. forgot Brock Faber was even on the Minnesota Wild, so that <laughs> that's like something there. So he was part of the Fiala trade, I believe. It was yeah, he was the big prospect coming back for Fiala. So yeah, so you know they got some young guys, obviously a little unproven. Um, also, Marco Rossi had his first NHL goal taken away. Kind of a sad oh. moment there. Oh. That guy has been through so much to even get back to the NHL and he gets his first goal taken away. So Dave, I, I I'm hoping it doesn't happen <laughs> Saturday night, obviously, where he does get his first NHL goal. But I'm banking on on Marco Rossi to be a player. The amount of young guns rookie cards of Marco Rossi that I purchased over the summer, thinking that he was gonna take a step this year. I need it. I need it to happen. Not Saturday. Don't need it to happen on Saturday. So it's definitely going to happen on Saturday now. Cause... So he'll probably score twice. Exactly. He probably will net a pair of goals. Is yeah. what's going to happen. Um, I think another key is is they're going to have to win the net front battles. It's going to be tough because that is a, a physical, physical team. But for me, even more so, it's it's more so important to do it in your own end, right? Keep it clear for, for Samsonov. Don't allow the wild players to get screens or deflections you saw last night a couple of deflections and they you know wound up costing them puck in the back of the net so uh, keep it nice and clear so sammy if he can see puck he can save puck uh hopefully that can be the case in this game against the wild yeah and on this blue line for the wild um they don't have jared spurgeon he is out for he has a knee injury right now so mm. You know, they're missing a very important piece on that blue line. You know, Brock Faber is on that top pair with Jonas Brodeen. Like, there's some inexperience. There's, you know, if you look on paper, like, this wild defense doesn't look amazing, but they play very structured, very sound hockey. Like, Jacob Middleton, that proved to be a pretty stingy trade that they made with San Jose, Goligoski, John Merrill, Kalen Addison. Like, there aren't, you know, world beater type players on the blue line but they do something they do what they do very well so yeah you're gonna have to be patient i think i think the big one with the Leafs is gotta be a little patient not get caught with you know forcing thing forcing chances on that too because you know it felt like florida florida did really well to start the game against minnesota from what i was watching and then it kind of fell apart for them so like Minnesota is going to going to I think they're going to try to bait Toronto in to get frustrated, especially early on in the game and then try to, you know, turn things around on them, turn things over on them. So be a little patient against this blue line. Reeves played for the wild at one point, too, didn't he? Yes, he did. Like he was a bunch of teams. That was after New York, right? From New York or it was a or it was off waivers from New York. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I think it was a trade, but I think it was like a fifth round pick or something like that. Um, I, he had a good game, you know, along with Klingberg, probably might 
maybe we see some more fireworks in this one where he won't decides to assert his dominance against his former team uh, for his new team. It's kind of what he's here to do. Right. So uh, perhaps we can see another uh, tussle or something like that from Ryan Reeves would be nice to see. Uh, all right, Dave. Um, any other, uh, any, by the way, actually, I did want to ask this question because I've kind of just popped into my mind. The, we're talking about this game and assuming that Ilya Samsonov will get the start. I'm sure we'll find out in practice uh, later on today whether or not that is going to be the case. But it's so early in the year, and so often we see goaltenders split the first couple of games. Um, who, who would you start in this game, actually? Would you give it to Joseph Wall, or would you let Samsonov back in the net after kind of a tough outing against Montreal? I mean, I think you give it to Samsonov. You give him a chance to get back in there and, you know, first game wasn't clean. See if he can get back on track in the second game, right? I mean, that's because he's your starter. Like, we, I know that there's always that wonder if you, if there's a goalie controversy or anything like that to start. Unfortunately for the Leafs, they don't have many back to backs in the first part of the season. So they can give a pretty healthy rotation. And they're going to have to be a little bit creative with it. But I think it's a little early to throw a wall in for a second game. Maybe you do it next week against like the Panthers, right? You can throw them into one of those. Black games Hawks. Road, right. You got the Blackhawks. You got the Bedard Bull. You know, he's in, uh, he'll be in on Monday. So I think, yeah, you see how, how Samson plays in the second game. And if he has a less than stellar night, you, you give Joseph Bull the next game. But I think yeah. right now, Keith would tell you he's our starter. We're going to go with him. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I can buy that. Has to do it otherwise, and just makes us look bad and put Joseph Wall. <laughs> I don't think there's a wrong play. Like, like I said, it's it's so early in the season. Just because you go to Wall for Game Two doesn't mean that there's a controversy. Doesn't mean doesn't mean anything. All it means is it's early in the season, and you might not want to play. Uh, you know, this guy so much. You know, early on, save that. So potentially you just try and get both goalies in early just to give them a little look, but I wouldn't be surprised uh, if they give it back to, to Samsonov and, and, you know, try and rebound off, off a bit of a tough game on, uh, on Wednesday night. All right. Now we'll take a break. When we come back, speaking of a tough night for Samsonov, I don't know if you saw a lot of the comments on Twitter and on some of the fan blogs and fan pages, but man, do some people have takes on this guy and what he is going to do uh, the rest of the season. It's, it's, it's been a lot of overreactions over the first 72 hours of the season. We'll talk, chat about some of them when we come back, those including the Maple Leafs and other teams around the NHL. So we'll get to all that uh, next. But first, let me tell you guys all about one of today's show sponsors, and it's Sleeper. The NHL season is finally here i absolutely love the nhl and i know that you do too and that's why i want to tell you about the sleeper app the sleeper app is the official daily fantasy app of the locked on nhl network and it's my go-to for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey with sleeper you can win up to 100 times your cash on daily fantasy use the promo code locked on nhl and you'll get up to 100 dollars uh of match play on your first deposit terms and conditions apply. That's locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details. Welcome back into the locked on at least podcast, Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. Um, 72 hours have passed by in the young NHL season. And we've seen a lot. We have definitely seen a lot so far. Lots of really good storylines. Connor Bedard scored his first goal the other night against Chicago or against Boston. Nice little wrap around there. We saw a four goal performance from Brock Besser, which was a really cool story to see, which obviously meant that uh, the team on the other side, the Edmonton Oilers, uh, not very happy with the performance that they had. Uh, also Oilers fans, not stoked about it. Lots of takes going on about that club and that duo and net. Um, and there's just so much going on so far throughout the uh, the early season here. Uh, way too early overreactions. What are some of the ones that you've seen uh, either on Twitter or that you've had water cooler discussions yourself with people? What are some overreactions so far through the season? 
Well, obviously for a Leafs related one that the goal song is brutal, terrible. They should bring back <laughs> Hollow Notes. Yeah, oh, I've God. seen a lot of that. I have seen seen lot. You know what though? It seems like the fan base is actually pretty split because a lot of people I, I definitely have gotten the sense that they've never heard of it. They don't care for it and they want to change and they would prefer to go back to Hollow Notes. But then on the other hand, there's a, a, a also a large segment of the fan base that really digs it, that think that it's a pretty good song. It, it gets the juices flowing, gets people bumping. I think a big problem, Dave, and we kind of spoke on this yesterday with Frankie. I think it's more of a live song than it is a TV song. It didn't come across the tube great, I will say. Um, but because I'm very familiar with the tune, I I know how how much of a pump up it actually is. So I can only imagine blaring through Scotiabank Arena that it is, you know, a, a solid song. And I mean, you were there. You could tell me. You know what? It wasn't a terrible song. Um, like it's one game. Like fans are kind of probably just like. But like when to, like, when, you know, when Matthew scored or Noah Gregor scored like, that first goal, did you see people? Were they up? Were they head banging to the song? Like what? What was the reaction to well, the people? Like, there was reaction to like I know some people like I oh, fans are in re- I, fans reacting to the actual goal being scored right. So there's excitement there. It I I don't I didn't really notice as many fans bob into it. But again, it's another one of those you gotta get yourself used to it. Although I did listen to Jackie Redman, host over mm. at NHL Network, Canadian brethren over there, and she had a Redman. pretty good take about the about the goal song in that she felt like the song has to really have that pop to yeah. it, right? Like you think of like Chicago and New York, those are iconic goal songs that get the crowd going like easily especially the Rangers one, like the ones that really speak to you and really get you going. Um, So this one, I'll give it time. I'm just wondering if it's going to like, also like, let's not forget the Scotiabank arenas crowd is a very tough crowd, especially in particular areas to get going. Yeah. That's right. So it doesn't matter sometimes what song you're playing because you're not getting some of those in the one hundreds to do what they do in other arenas as well. Do you think the goal song is this much of a conversation in any other market? Like, no, (laughs) it's, it's been a topic of conversation for a couple of years because they kept the same song year after year after year, no success. Why do they keep with the song? And then they finally change it. And now it's still a topic of conversation when it's completely split between whether or not people like it or not. I, I find it very fascinating. Um, this is a an interesting fan base. The only other city where it is a topic of conversation is in Buffalo. And that's because the players pick their songs. I yeah. don't know if you heard, Jeff Skinner is going with High School Musical as his goal song this year. Like, we're all in this together. That's the one. I don't, I didn't get a, I didn't hear which one, which song it was. I'm not too familiar with the high school musical soundtrack, but that's more of my oh, sisters. Great tracks. So there's some great tracks. Could, oh, get breaking you, free, get... breaking free. So we're, I think it's, that's the one. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's of all one. of yeah. all the songs that would have probably, like, if I had to power rank the songs that I thought, and I'm just sticking to the original high school musical, uh, of all the songs that I thought would be, oh, maybe a pretty good, Goal song that would be very low on the list, <laughs> like that breaking free. So, these are the ones from like the Sabres legitimately posted all of the okay. First up, Peyton Crab, Ice and Joe's one more time. That's a pretty solid, solid one. Uh, one see, team. I'm surprised Peyton Crabs went with Raspy team. Like, he's a young, young guy. I'm surprised he would go with the song. You know what, though, that's such a, a classic. It's just a classic song. I can't believe, and it says Troy Bolton and Gabriela Montez. <laughs> it doesn't even say not even the actual people that wrote or sang. I know they technically sang the song, but yeah, that's hilarious. Well, I mean, I like it may it could have even said like Vanessa Hudgens and uh, Zach Efron. Zach Efron, but no, it goes with the the characters here. I do. Give me, I do. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me by ABBA. That's a funny one. 
Yeah, Owen Power going with Power. That's pretty cat. That's pretty good. Yeah, I do like that. I do like that. Like I don't mind that because then the oh and uh, hold on, Jacob Bryson's going with the uh, Timmy trumpet. The problem is Jacob Bryson uh, or won't is, likely score that. Jake, is it Jacob Bryson? Yeah, uh, yes. not going to score a lot, so probably not going to hear that song too too much, which is kind of unfortunate. I don't know. Maybe at some point the Maple Leafs will convert to uh, to personalized goal songs, but for now, hey, we are we're we're stuck with pursuit of happiness. Uh, at least for this season. Um, curious to see what the other ones are going to be, though. Like for for those who didn't hear, um, there are going to be multiple goal songs throughout the season, uh, and just there's going to be specialty songs for specialty nights. So interested to see what that means exactly. Uh, like one of the other way too early overreactions that I've heard too is like Samsonov is. I saw it in the comment section on our YouTube video. I saw a couple of people on Twitter posting about this too saying Samsonov is just another Jack Campbell had one really good season. And now he's going to, you know, show his true colors. I know, I know I saw it. Uh, That's just uh, (sighs) lunacy. I mean, after one game, the guy was terrific last year for the Maple Leafs. After one game, you're ready to say, Oh, no season's over guys. Jack Campbell can't win with this group. Do people not realize that Samsonov still needs to get a contract after this year? It's not like Jack Campbell, who secured the five-year bag, then decided to be, well, continue his bad play. I was going to say, I was like, eh, he got the bag by playing horrible. Yeah. He was statistically like the worst goaltender from, I think it was like the new year on when he was with the Maple Leafs, like an 880 save percent. It was brutal, but... Uh, yeah, go figure what happened on the other night in Edmonton with Jack Campbell and that. Um, but come on, it's it's one game. Well, let's let's yeah, not overreact yeah. here to to, yeah. to that performance. Um, give the guy five to ten games before you say before you get worried about him. I guess I would. I say. will say that the first comment reply to that comment on YouTube was it was the first game of the year. Simmer down. Yes. Yeah. So. Austin Matthews. 70 goal races on, baby. Let's go. How about that one? How about that overreaction? 70. Cleared past 60. No one cares about 60 anymore. He's done that. Now it's 70. And what he showed last night. I he's mean, people were, that, McDavid, people were talking, wondering if he could have gone to 70 last year. Yeah. I mean, yeah, close. We scored 66. Did he end with last season? Oh, I don't know if it was that many. I think it was. It was like 64, 65, 66. It was in that, in that range. It was. He was a beast. 64. Left. 64. Okay. Well, with the way the Oilers are playing this year, I don't know if you know he's going to get to 50 at this range. Yeah. Well, there's a, another hot take. Hot take coming out of Dave. Is that concerning, though? Like, because I saw a lot of people out there and they're looking at Jack Campbell. They're looking at Stu Skinner. And the reaction out of Edmonton today is team's not going to win with this goaltending. They got to do something. Already one game in, one game in, and it's trade for a goalie season in in Edmonton. And they got to get someone to take a goalie back. Good luck with that. No, they're gonna have to. Re- they're gonna have to play better. Like they're gonna have to play better. And like everyone's got to play better. I don't think you can just put on the goalies. Yeah. No, I I agree with you. One of my hot takes. I watched that game last night, uh, Vancouver and Edmonton after the Toronto game. Dude, Elias Pettersson looks good, man. He's a dark horse MVP candidate, I think. Is that too hot of a take? People were talking about him last year for a little bit. Like if if Vancouver was a better team last year, Patterson would have been in that conversation, I think. He had yeah. an unreal season. It's just, you know, obviously with Connor McDavid, it's always tough, but like he's currently fifty five to one on FanDuel to be the Hart Trophy winner. Was he, he five to one? With, was he playing with Brock Besser last night? Yeah. Like that was um, just a dominant line. I mean, yeah. and, and like the power play was was scoring at will, and everything was coming up good for uh, the Vancouver Canucks. He laid a massive hit. I don't know if you saw, but he laid a big time thunderous hit uh, also last night, which is hilarious to see. Um, and he had an unbelievable assist on the opening goal. Oh, the Garland oh, goal? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just, you know, the the touch on that pass was unreal. Um, and 
We spoke on this yesterday a little bit, saying how, you know, it's likely that Nico Heischer's got the inside track to to be the next, you know, Bergeron, where he's going to be the favorite to win, um, you know, a Selkie each and every year. Elias Patterson's going to put himself into that into that realm as well, I believe. Again, you can say that's an overreaction, but I think this guy's due for a pretty big year. And as Elliot Freeman said last night, he is also due for a bajillion dollars. Uh, Eleven billion. Eleven billion. Eleven billion. But it's almost like in my mind. Or, yeah, yeah. Eleven million. Whatever the number was. Yes. Lots, lots of money. Uh, what's what's another way too early overreaction that you see? Before we logged on, you threw out a jab to the Buffalo Sabres. Are you are you folding up shop on Buffalo hey, after hey, one hey, game, hey, Dave? Hey, let's go, Buffalo. Yeah, no, Buffalo looked terrible. But I guess, yeah, one game. But maybe is the hype going to be too much for the Buffalo Sabres? Like when team well, when there's no when there's no expectations on you, it's easy to play well. Once the expectations are placed on you, there are teams that crumble under that pressure a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean that's a good New York team. Like that's a team that legitimately has a chance to win a Stanley Cup. So mm-hmm. it's not act like you know, they're out there playing the Yotes. That said, what I believe is probably the most concerning part of it is, you know, you're looking at Devin Levi as that the savior in net who's finally going to give Buffalo good enough goaltending to get them to the playoffs after, you know, last year finishing just one point shy with Craig Anderson being their goaltender. Uh, yes, that Craig Anderson, who's like 49 or 11 billion years old, maybe. Um, now they're relying on like a 20 year old, 21 year old goaltender yeah. who gave up five goals in, in the season opener. Again, not going to overreact to, uh, to one performance, but it's like, well, if he ain't it, the Buffalo a playoff team, a team that they're going to, those are teams you're going to have to beat if you want to be a playoff team this year, right? So, yeah. I, think Bagula, I, I bet you Terry Bagula too, too, was just kind of sick to his stomach watching that after having to pay uh, both. Ross was Darlene and Owen power within like weeks of each other. And then that's the performance that he sees in game one to open the season. I Oof. think they were both a dash five in the, like to combine dash five in this game. Oh, I was going to say how they were both a dash five. <laughs> no, like I think Darlene was a dash three and I think power was a dash two or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you in, in, in three seconds, uh, what they were last night, Buffalo Sabres. Yeah. Owen power was a dash one. Oh, okay, gotcha. And uh, Dalian was a dash three, so, so that's yeah. like, not great. So those not guys great. are, you know, they just got big tickets. They really do need like those are the guys are gonna have to step up, right? Because you do have an inexperienced goaltender, and you gotta. Those are the guys you just they just got the paychecks, right? So they gotta, yeah, they gotta Cousins, work. Cousins, Thompson, Ocposo, all those guys on the ice for a couple of goals against. Tuck on the ice for a goal against. You know, it's the the, the guys who you expect to be scoring on Buffalo. And keep in mind, Buffalo was a top scoring team last year. I think they were like they were top four. I want to say fourth, third, or fourth in in league wide scoring last season. Um, keeping the puck out of the net was their biggest issue. So. Uh, continued to be an issue uh, into game one of the season. But also a reason why keeping the puck out of the nets an issue is because defending their own goal has been an issue, which is interesting when they just paid uh, what $19 million combined for, uh, for, for a couple of defensemen out there who consistently are giving up, you know, chances. Anyways, uh, we don't need to throw that much shade on the Buffalo Sabres. I'm sure when do the Leafs and Sabres play? I'm sure they play relatively soon. Leafs Sabers this season. We'll get our uh, our own two I'm eyes on them. November fourth. November fourth. They play in Toronto too. So hey, maybe you'll win tickets to go to the game because you always win yourself tickets. Oh yeah. By the way, I think I might need a break from going to games for a little bit because I'm on a streak right now. Of three straight overtime games. Yeah, so that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> Especially that game last night. I was like, it was tied for long spin. I'm like, this is really going to go to another overtime. I know. We should have known that that game was going to OT the second you said you had tickets to it. Yeah. I, I should have bet literally my life savings on that game going to overtime. Should have. Should have done it. 
All right, buddy. Uh, good stuff. Uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty more overreactions over the course of the opening weekend of the NHL season. Uh, one in which that uh, includes the Maple Leafs taking on the Minnesota Wild. Should be a great game between you know two clubs that uh, definitely have playoff if not Stanley Cup aspirations. So I'm looking forward to it. I know you're looking forward to it. Uh, but that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all podcasts and platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. Follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. Go ahead, smash that like button if you're here watching on YouTube. Let us know down below how you think the weekend is going to fare and what's your biggest overreaction league-wide uh, over the first 72 hours of the NHL season. Let us know in the comment section down below or reach out to us on Twitter. Uh, we'll be back with another episode for you guys on Monday to recap what happens over the weekend. Enjoy the game tomorrow, but until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.